What's up guys, Daniel Lungo here and today, whoo, it's an exciting day. Today we're going to be talking about how to eliminate your credit cards. Those little bastards. Alright, roll the intro. Hey there, good to see you again. It's been a long time. Today I'm gonna give you six tips about how to eliminate your credit card debt. As of 2017, there's nearly $770 billion worth of credit card debt nationwide. Almost every person have some sort of credit card debt that is revolving and is accruing every month. It's an epidemic, it's a problem, and I'm sure that if you're watching this, you know how it feels. You know how it feels seeing every month those uh, credit card bills stacking up, accruing interest, and seem like they're just endless. So today, I'm gonna give you six tips about how to eliminate your credit card debt faster. If eliminating credit card debt is one of your goals, we have to get back to the basic. And because of that, here's tip number one. You want to start with budgeting. Budgeting is like a blueprint. It's a roadmap. It's something that can tell you where you are today. So many people, because they don't have understanding exactly how much comes in versus how much goes out, perceive their credit cards as additional source of income, which is not correct. Creating a budget sheet gives you understanding how much exactly comes in versus how much exactly comes out. You might be completely surprised when you put the numbers on the piece of paper. Another thing that will able to help you with the budget sheet is put those credit cards away. You wanna make sure that you are able to put them in a glass of water and freeze them. I'm not telling you to cut them, although some a lot of people tend to do that. You wanna take that maybe extreme, um, extreme step. I'll not judge it against you, it's your call. But you wanna maybe put it away and have the ability to, um, to go through an entire month of expenses and bills and everything that you have to pay without using your credit cards, but rather use your debit card or cash if that's what you prefer. Again, I'm not gonna judge it against you, it's up to you. Which is why you wanna go back to the fundamentals. Get that roadmap, get that blueprint to help you guide from where you are today and where you want to be. So put together a budget. Once you put together a budget sheet and now you have a better understanding exactly what is the surplus of income that you have every month that you are able to use for any discretionary expenses after paying all of your bills, now you are able to tackle your credit card debt. And the first step that I recommend, which is tip number two, is to transfer your debt to a zero interest card. You can find those cards on places like WalletNerd, Mint.com, and other resources online, and I will link them below. But you are able to give yourself some time once transferring those balances of not continue accruing additional, um, additional debt due to high interest, which many times that's the major catch for most of those credit card companies and how they're able to get you from the first place. So transferring your balance to a low interest um, or no interest preferably is the way to go. However, be cautious because when you once you transfer the balance, many times you have fees associated with the transfer or interest that is being added for the total sum transferred. So just be aware of that and read carefully about the different credit cards that are available that give you the offer of potential no interest and for how long they are giving you that interest. Woo! So far so good. 
We've been preparing the groundwork to tackle our credit card debt, which lead us to step number three. So, so far we've been creating a roadmap. We've been transferring our balance that we're not tackling with additional interest every month. And now it's time to tackle the debt. Some of the first thing that we recommend to do is consider uh, if transferring the balance to a low interest credit card is not an option and you don't have uh, no or low interest, you might want to consider taking personal loan or loan consolidation. That is the first step that I would recommend somebody to do. Many times you can go to places like local credit unions that have a lot better rating uh, and a lot better interest versus some of the commercial large banks that enable you to repay your debt in the lower interest and to tackle it more efficiently. In other places you can find some of those low interest uh, personal loans. It's through places like Lending Club, um, uh, Lending Tree. Again, I will link, I will leave the link below so you can find them and, uh, and take a look, okay? Each one is a little bit different, but find the one that is right for you. All right, so we are at tip number four. I want to give a quick disclaimer. Tip number four may not apply to everyone. However, um, tip number four is home equity line of credit. If you're a homeowner and you have built some equity in your home, you might want to consider taking some of the equity out and have the ability to repay yourself towards the equity um, in a lower interest and take the opportunity to take that money and pay down high interest credit card. It is a really useful tool. However, you should be very, very, very cautious. You know, home equity line of credit is a secured loan, which means that it puts your house as a collateral. However, the other advantage of home equity line of credit that many times it is referred to as a second mortgage, which means that you are able to take advantage not only of the lower interest, but also have the ability to deduct the interest uh, that on the payments that you have on the second mortgage. So that is a huge advantage for some of the individuals that want to maybe also deduct that interest on their tax return. Another thing to consider when, uh, when thinking about home equity line of credit, and I always, always recommend to speak to your financial professional, is that from any reason, if the market value of your home falls down, you might be in a position where you owe more than the value of your home. So take that into consideration. For many times for the individuals who ask me about uh, home equity line of credit, I usually say you want to use it for a smaller amounts of debt and something that you f foresee and think to pay faster. Okay, it's not something that you want to stretch out over a course of time. It's something that you want to get it done as quick as possible. It's just a method to repay your credit card faster and have a payments that have lower interest and potentially lower payments every month as well. So that is tip number four. Again, doesn't apply for everyone, but for those of you who it is that might apply, that can be a great way to go about it, especially if you have no room to wiggle in your budget and uh, to find extra income to be able to cover your debt. Tip number five. For a lot of you who might have cash value permanent life insurance, you might able to take some of the cash component. And for those of you who don't know, permanent cash value life insurance have a savings component inside, embedded inside of the policy that grows tax deferred and comes out tax free. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, you probably don't have it. But if you have a permanent policy, not a term policy, a permanent policy, you might able to take some of the money out and be able to pay some of your debt. Remember, however, again, always give you a quick disclaimer that if you're taking the money out in the form of a loan, usually what happens uh, in an event of a death situation or any severe catastrophe, that amount that you borrow out of the policy is being reduced from the death benefit. So that's something to consider. 
you are able to repay yourself that back again in lower interest many times anywhere between three to five percent versus 25 percent on your credit cards um but the good thing about that that amount it grows tax deferred so you have not paid on it over the years and when you come when you take it out it's tax free and you have the ability to repay down some of your debt also be remember that in the early years of cash value life insurance policy in case you consider getting one for that specific reason Remember that you will not have as much cash accrued because it takes some time and because majority of the risk falls on the insurance carrier versus on your savings account. So just remember that, but with time, that can be an additional amazing savings tool and I will talk about it in a separate episode. And tip number six, perhaps my favorite one and the one that I use most frequently for my client. This is how I'm able to reduce many times substantial amount of debt for my clients in a lot faster and efficient way. That sixth tip is called the snowball debt payoff. Some call it differently, but let's dive on the computer. I will show you exactly how it works. Hey guys, we're on the computer and I want to show you exactly what is the credit debt snowball. And I've put together a sheet and I will have that sheet uh, available for download and send directly to your email uh, so you can use it as well. I've put it together very simple. Basically what you gotta do, do is you wanna write down all of your credit cards in an also ascending amount of debt. So from the lowest to the biggest. Next to it, you wanna create a column that has a minimum payment. So you have exactly the ability to see how much you need every month, okay? What you do is basically, and we're gonna fast forward, and I'm gonna move over here the, a little bit over here, so you can see. You are taking the first minimum down payment, and the way I structure for the individuals, we find anywhere between 200 to 300 dollars, um, that is available in their budget and we use that amount uh, towards accelerating the payment of their credit cards so this is what we do we take the lowest credit card and we add in this case in this specific client we have taken three hundred dollars okay so she has the, uh, the ability we made some things available we shuffle things around we were able to free up three hundred dollars to accelerate the, the payment and getting out of debt so the first payment was three hundred dollars the regular minimum payment is twenty five dollars as you can see over here but we added three hundred dollars and this way now the her payment is three hundred and twenty five the rest of the credit card you are maintaining them at the minimum payment you are just wanting to make sure again to put all of your credit cards away put them in a glass water freeze them but make sure that you're not accruing any more debt if you have any automatic payments coming out of those credit cards beforehand you want to make sure that you stop them and transfer them to your debit card so you are able to know exactly as part of your total bills and reminding you again for that roadmap your budget sheet where all your bills are coming from and what is the total amount but from your credit card debt they need to be dormant they need to be if you're not using them you should not accrue any additional payments besides maybe interest which is why credit uh, credit card debt snowball is best used with step number two which is, was transferring your credit card to uh, no interest uh, basically credit cards other credit cards that might have no interest at all so once we are added that was the discretion in our 325 dollars uh excuse me 300 dollars to the minimum payment on the first credit card debt as you can see we are able if we compare without the snowball or with the snowball we are able to pay in almost two and a half months the total debt okay the total debt that is over here by just adding that amount once that is paid off okay we are taking now the additional 325 so the 300 the, the discretionary that we were able to find plus the minimum payment on the first one 
and we were adding it to the minimum payment of the second credit card. So now if we had 325 and we add 81, we are right now at $406. And we take that $406 and we apply that towards the second balance, which is 1,351. And now we are able to pay it down in three, almost in a half months. Okay, and as you can see, instead of 16, almost 17 months, and you do it as on and on and on. You keep transferring the previous balance, plus you add to it the minimum payment of the next credit card. And as you can see, the payment for each credit card, as you pay off one of them, the second credit card should be more. It should be the, the payment before, plus the minimum payment of the new credit card. And thus, you are able to eliminate the total credit cards, which in this case, let's... Let's just calculate what is the total. So almost $20,000 we were able to pay. You can see the same thing. In 30 months okay and that is without doing any change it's really perhaps the most efficient way that you can pay your debt faster now some of you might ask well what about other types of debt that I might have hold on I will talk about other type of debt debt like like uh, student loans and other type mortgage how to accelerate paying those off faster as well I really hope that you like this method and can use it and again if you want to get that sheet and have the ability to use it for your um for your credit cards link will be below so you are able to find that sheet as well all right guys that's it for me i really hope you enjoyed this episode if you like it put a thumbs up subscribe to my channel Every week I will be giving some tutorials, tips, advice, how can you better your financial situation. I'm looking forward truly to see you next week. And in the meanwhile, if you wanna get that budget sheet or the debt snowball sheet, links will be below. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. And until then, bye bye.